So for one last thing here, let's take a minute to look at, using MallView, these concepts of Newman projections and conformational isomers. So I've got a butane here, and we can see I can, I can set this up along its side, just moving it around, and really get the Newman projection. And really see this is what we're looking at when we're trying to draw a Newman projection. I can also use this to kind of take a look at that concept of steric hindrance by throwing a couple more, a couple more methyl groups at that, and see that's getting pretty crowded. And each of these carbons could still handle one more methyl group. If I just use this button to turn on my hidden hydrogens, I can see that this is this is really busy. There's a lot going on here. If I hit that 2D to 3D. I get this, this huge amount of extra stuff moving around. It would be really difficult for another molecule to get in and attack one of these carbons. So just for comparison's sake, let's take something. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So let's make an octane. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And let's take a look at both of these. So by comparison, octane, which has the same number of carbons and hydrogens, is going to be a lot more open and vulnerable to the attack of another molecule. So we can see that. Okay, so then one last thing, let's take a look at our cyclohexane. So let's hit a 2D to 3D on that, and we can see, boom, there we go. Just looking straight ahead, it's got that nice hexagonal structure, but if I start to turn this, I can see that even here, it's got this, this conformation. This one is in the chair conformation. We can see that there. And if I turn it up to look at the, oh, that's not the right ones, to look at the Newman, here we go, there we go, the Newman projection, I can see that this is the staggered conformation for this cyclohexane.